So super excited to be part of Nasty Women of Comedy Part 3. Yeah. Um, although my answer was slightly wrong, as of next month I will be Willow Pate. Um, it's gotta be. Uh, and it's super exciting for me as a trans woman because, you know, a lot of times we have to fight stuff. It's, it's hard. I hear, yes, I am trans. I'm not going to whip it out on stage or anything. I say that coming out like it's not a work thing. <laughs> oh, man. We have an amazing lineup, as you heard. Um, some of my great friends here. This is my last show in Arkansas, by the way. Um, I know. I'm sorry. I'm going to miss everybody here. This is where I got my start, and I'm always going to love this place. Little Rock fucking rules. Woo! Uh, so it is hard out here as a trans woman, though. I mean, we have all this, you know, discrimination on an institutional level. But more importantly, um, no one really taught me how to, like, tuck properly, so I just spend my life just completely chafed. It's horrible. It's horrible. On top of that, uh, my hormone therapy makes me feel like I'm pregnant all the time, which is great. Um, if you've never walked around just like sore and needing to pee and overly emotional 24-7 for four years, don't, don't do it. Uh, uh, but yeah, speaking of institutional discrimination, um, we're only going to like let them have two more years, right? Woo! Like, like enough of that, all right? You guys did so good. Please don't go all Caucasian about it and bring them back. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, it's been a crazy, it was, 2017 was kind of crazy about it, you know? There was a different, like, scandal every single day, and we didn't get to spend any time focusing on what I thought was the real scandal of 2017. I'm talking, I don't know if you heard about this, but Hobby Lobby was caught funding ISIS by buying illegally obtained Mesopotamian artifacts. Why wasn't that a bigger deal? That's hilarious. Uh, because, like, I work in a service industry job. Does anyone here work retail or food service at all? Yeah, Alright, so here's my impersonation of working in a service industry job. Did my mic just go off? Oh no. Oh, there we go. Okay, so here's my impersonation of working in a service industry job. Hi, is there anything I can get for you today? Why don't you go die? Okay, great, thanks. Let me know if you need anything else. At this point, you're going to have a conversation with your manager where they're going to say, uh, well, below. I heard you didn't kill yourself when you were asked, so uh, we got a complaint from a customer. Can you sign this indicating we talked? <laughs> I, thank you. Thank you. I work at Starbucks. I work at Starbucks. One time I spilled boiling hot water on my hand, giving myself a second degree burn. And as I run to the back crying to get the first aid kit, I hear, uh, isn't she going to take my order? <laughs> I could get stabbed to death on the floor at Starbucks and a 40-year-old white woman in a denim skirt would hold a frappuccino over me going, um, this was supposed to be hot. <laughs> you can get a gun. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't know where these like 40, 50-year-old women are getting their floor-length denim skirts. I think they're pretty fire, and I want to know, is there some kind of, like, Pentecostal warehouse store that I am in <laughs> Oh my god. But you know what? We gotta focus on the silver lining uh, of, of this. You know, Malala Yousafzai I just got into Cambridge. Cambridge! Woo! Right? That's awesome! It's huge progress for women's education all over the world. The only thing that I think would suck about that is like being her classmate because you couldn't get away with anything. Oh, I'm sorry. You wanted to miss your final to go to uh, a doctor's appointment? She got shot in the head when her assignment was on time. Couldn't get away with anything. I did only go to like two years of college, but it was weird. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about that. I don't have a full joke written for that part yet. <laughs> but hey, it's 2018. We gotta look forward. This is gonna be the year of me, or as we all tell ourselves, usually by the end of the year, we wind up like Rocky Balboa, third quarter, half conscious, beaten up by some weird Russian dude. <laughs> but we always tell ourselves these like, these New Year's resolutions that we never keep. Like my New Year's resolution this year was to like, 
stop getting into fights online. And like 30 minutes into that, Roseanne Barr said something and I had to get into a fight with her on Twitter. It's an obligation. Twitter's a job now, all right? It sucks. Uh, so we got to focus on the silver lining this year. I want to say that because um, we always have to be. We have to keep our minds moving forward. And I really just don't want a year like last year. I was at this convention last year, and I, okay, so it was in Chicago in December, which should have been a big red flag for me. Um, but I like Chicago. I just don't like it in December. It's very cold. Anyway, so I'm at this convention. What kind of convention was it? It doesn't matter. I don't want you to ask me. It will become apparent as like this story goes on. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so I'm at this pitch. I go downstairs to the rave. I'm wearing my mini dress. I'm looking cute. I take a hit of Molly. I'm feeling myself. <laughs> and right as it kicks in, the lights come up and they go, Oh, we need to evacuate the hotel because of chlorine gas. No! <laughs> and like at this point, I'm rolling and evacuated in the street of uh, Chicago, or it's the Hyatt Regency. So there wasn't anything there. It was just a big empty area. And it's freezing cold. I'm rolling, wearing a mini dress, I almost died, but the only reason that I did not die of hypothermia was because there were thousands of furries there. <laughs> Do you know who these people are? They dress up in animal costumes and rub up against each other. Again, why was I at this convention? Don't ask. Um, <laughs> so the only way I could stay warm was just be like, get really close to these like sweaty, gross, stinky dudes. Just be like, please don't let me die. Um, that's that story. <laughs> so, are y'all ready? Are y'all ready for some amazing comedians tonight? <laughs> are y'all ready to get nasty? <laughs> All right, cool. I have like just a couple minutes left. Um, so I want to ask. I want to. I want to work the audience. Tell me about. Tell me to yourself right here. Who are you? Where are you from? Benton. Benton. Okay, I don't know how. Go with Rachel? Okay. Uh, what do you do? That's dope. That's actually way cooler. I don't have anything prepared for field biologists. <laughs> but that's awesome. Alright. How did you hear about the show? Rachel? <laughs> Jesus? Uh, <laughs> Oh my god. So I have this coworker. I just wanted, I was just curious. Uh, actually, by a round of applause, who here heard about us on 106.7 The Ride? Okay. Who heard about us on Facebook? Okay. Now, who is here on a Tinder date? Oh, me. It is not going well. Uh, so, okay. sometimes when you're performing, you get kind of caught up in these moments. Uh, you don't, you don't like really think about like who all exactly is in the audience, right? So one time, I'm telling like this horrible, raunchy story that I now can never tell again in public because as soon as I finish it, I look down and I go, "Oh, hey, mom." <laughs> she was sitting right there, and she looked so disappointed. <laughs> My, oh, uh -huh. My mic shut off again for a second. Um, so, I'm going to walk out of here now. I'm going to introduce our very next comedian. I want you to give it up for Trent.